Good morning, Malcolm. I am sorry that it took me so long to get back to you. I've been very busy, but I did not forget. So your dad sent me your video with your question, and so I wrote some notes just to make sure that I can answer it completely, and I'm also gonna send your dad some videos that you guys can watch together. So first off, welding is electricity, and if your science classes have gotten that far, um, molecules are made of atoms and atoms have a nucleus in the middle with protons and neutrons and then they have electrons like little moons around them and electricity is when the electrons jump from one atom to the next when those electrons have to jump across a gap they they struggle uh, it's like trying to jump across the street instead of just stepping onto the sidewalk and when electrons encounter resistance, that resistance creates heat. And in the case of welding, we do that on purpose so that the resistance is hot enough to actually melt the metal. And melting the metal is breaking apart the molecules and the atoms in order to turn it into, from a solid into a liquid. So. Um, three things that welding needs in order to happen and not just melt the metal into a puddle that congeals and solidifies like a lump of coal is the first thing we need is an electrode. An electrode is some kind of metal that is designed to carry electricity on purpose and bring it from the machine to the work and we have to complete a circuit because if there's nowhere for the electrons to go, then they're not gonna start traveling. So you have a torch that you're welding with, but you also have a clamp that goes on the other side of your piece of metal or whatever it is that you're making, like a fence or you know, a car or a piece of sculpture. So uh, the next thing that welding needs is filler metal to strengthen the weld puddle because when you break the metal apart into a puddle and you turn it from a solid into a liquid it gets and then it has to solidify again it gets weaker so we add metal we add new atoms with different kinds of metal in there so that when it gets solid again it's stronger than it was if you had just let it cool on its own and then the last thing we need is we need to protect the liquid metal from the atmosphere, from the air around us because there's moisture in the air and there's atoms that we don't want mixing with the metal when it's liquid, like hydrogen in atmospheric water. So we got oxygen and we got hydrogen. Hydrogen likes to make friends with everybody, and it especially likes to make friends with metal, but hi adding hydrogen to liquid metal and then letting the metal get solid again is like putting marbles in with a wall of Legos that you're trying to build. It makes the whole thing weaker. So we have to keep, we, we cover the weld puddle with different kinds of inert noble gases that don't interact with other molecules. Their electrons are good to go and they don't wanna make friends with anybody and so it protects the, the weld puddle. Um, or in the case of stick welding, which is the one that you see on TV with all the sparks and everything, um, there is a paper coating on the welding rod that turns into a crust and then after the metal has hardened from liquid into solid again, we can chip the crust off. So I'm gonna send your dad a few pictures and some links to some videos on the internet that I think are helpful. But let me know if you have any more questions and I would be happy to answer them, hopefully in a more timely fashion. Have a good day.